In this video, we will show how to ignite a wood crib and use burn away to show the crib cells disappearing as they burn. Let us start by demonstrating a simple burn away model. This is a column made of the same wood we used for the crib simulation. We use the same reaction. The same material. On the surface that uses this material, we specify a heat release rate of 1000 kilowatts per meter squared. This is an unrealistically high value, and we only use it to speed the calculation. We also specify an ignition temperature, so the surface will only begin to burn at the specified heat release rate after the surface reaches this temperature. Finally, we select the option to burn away the obstruction. This shows the igniter surface. It radiates heat onto the column that ignites the wood. In this example, I have chosen to specify the bulk density for the obstruction representing the column. This is an important option that says FDS should calculate the available fuel mass based on the volume of the obstruction and the bulk density, not the surface thickness. The column obstruction has a length of 0.1 meter on each side and a depth of 0.2 meters. All surfaces are identical, but only the top surface will reach ignition temperature, so burning proceeds from the top. We can see the burn away. And we can plot the total heat release rate. Note that the value is 10 kilowatts. In previous videos, we showed how to calculate the heat of combustion for a fuel. Knowing the mass of fuel in the simulation and the heat of combustion gives us the total energy that will be released by the fire. For our wood, the heat of combustion is 17.9 megajoules per kilogram. The density is 369.6 kilograms per meter cubed, and the volume is 0 0.002 meter cubed. So the total heat release will be 13,231 kilojoules. If we burn at a rate of 1,000 kilowatts per meter squared on the top surface, that has an area of 0.01 meter squared, the total time to burn away will be 1,323 seconds. That is the result that we see on this plot of the column heat release rate. This figure also illustrates a potential source of error when using burn away. If you do not specify a bulk density, the amount of fuel will be calculated based on the thickness of the surface. When any one surface burns away, the cell block is considered to burn away. This chart shows how using different surface thicknesses changed the total heat release rate. You should always check that the calculated heat release matches the fuel load that you specified. Before modeling our wood crib in detail, let us burn a single stick using the same material properties and mesh size that we plan to use for our full analysis. The single stick is 40 millimeters on each side and 500 millimeters long. The mesh size is 20 millimeters. The heat release rate per unit area is 175 kilojoules per meter squared. So the total heat release from burning the stick is 5,293 kilojoules. If all surfaces burned at a constant rate, the time to burn would be 363 seconds. We run the analysis and display the results. We plot the heat release rate and integrate. 
the integral is 5,263 kilojoules, which matches the expected value of 5,293. So we are ready to perform the full analysis. We use the same building model that we used in previous calculations. If you use Burnaway, you should model a fairly accurate approximation to the true crib geometry. Otherwise, you cannot capture the ignition and surface burn rate of the sticks accurately. In this case, I used a mesh size of 20 millimeters so that I could simulate the sticks as having a 40 millimeter cross section. As a result, the representation is very close to the real geometry. The fine mesh required the use of multiple meshes. This is where PyroSim's mesh splitting, merging, and refining tools really helped. The large uncertainty is how to define the heat release rate per unit area after ignition. For this first calculation, I assumed a value of 175 kilojoules based on peak heat release rate data in a paper by Michael Spearpoint. But, as could be expected, and will be shown, use of peak release rate resulted in too high a heat release for the wood crib simulation. Selecting the correct heat release rate is not simple. Here is some experimental calorimeter data. After ignition, a peak heat release rate occurs, followed by a decay to an approximate steady rate. However, a different heat release rate curve is obtained for different calorimeter radiant fluxes on the specimen. We do see a general correlation between the data reported by Tran and White and the peak and average data reported by Spearpoint. So we run the full analysis, which took a few days, and then come back to review the results. We ignite the wood crib with 0.3 kilograms of heptane. The crib burns. How well did we do? If we plot the predicted heat release rate and compare it to the experimental data, we see that the calculated value at five minutes is significantly larger than the measured value. In addition, the experimental results show an initial peak followed by decay, where the calculated results actually increase with time. We need to repeat the calculation with a surface heat release rate that follows this peak and decay pattern as shown in the calorimeter data. Second, the integrated heat release rate exceeds the available energy by about 3%. This is likely due to errors introduced by using multiple meshes in regions of significant burning. I plan to rerun this analysis and add the new results, but wanted to post this video both as a cautionary tale and since we have several users that have asked us how to model fires.